Over the past few episodes, we have covered problems with the concept of continental drift and examined the evidence that may well underpin an expansion process, which not only holds for the Earth, but many of the icy moons and some of the planets as well. One question which has remained is what causes this expansion process? In this episode, we will take a look at the different approaches that the variety of models have and what the implications for each is, as well as briefly discuss if there is a missing element that the Electric Universe can bring to the table here. There are many variants of the expanding Earth hypothesis, many with different approaches to how this might drive the expansion process. We can boil these down to two different lines of thought. The first relates to the formation process of the solar system and the planets, and the second is a cosmological one. We will start by examining some alternative concepts before diving into the detail of the main two. A pulsating planet. Here there would be cyclic expansion. In the case of the Earth, it is thought to have opened the oceans and contractions would have led to mountain building. The problem is that it does not fit with the data from the ocean floors, which shows a continuous expansion. Carey dismissed this idea and saw no compelling evidence for intermittent contractions. Meteoric and asteroid accretion. Here the slow buildup of catastrophic collisions with larger asteroids could lead to an increase in mass. Again here the ocean floor spreading rate cannot be explained by this concept. Reductions of the universal gravitational constant. The slow reduction in the gravitational constant would release elastic compressional energy through the Earth and phase changes to parts of the mantle. The problem here is that this would make the surface gravity unacceptably high in the past, and the amount of expansion that this would cause would also be very small in comparison to what is deduced from the evidence that we see. The formation process. The main point about this formation process is that, in this concept, the primordial solar system was not formed by progressive accretion of dust in a rotating nebula, but the planets were a result of a supernova explosion that shot into space little droplets of high density matter that today may constitute the innermost core of the planetary bodies. The Sun formed on a collapsed supernova core and the inner planets are made of matter coming from the inner part of the star, iron, sulphur and silicon. The outer planets come from the outer layers of that star, mostly hydrogen and helium. The progressive transformation of the denser phases into lighter chemical phases could be the cause of the expansion of Earth and the other planets. One of the main defenders of this concept was Dr Hugh G Owen, who held a geological post at London's Natural History Museum. He has written many books and taken part in numerous debates on an expanding Earth. In Owen's book Atlas of Continental Displacement, 200 million years to the present, he shows clear comparison between a fixed radius Earth and an expanding Earth. His model differs from other expanding Earth models in the amount of expansion being much less compared to other models, and therefore allowed for some subduction as well as an expansion. Oliver Manuel claims to have found evidence in favour of this model. He examined many different meteorites and found that all primordial helium is accompanied by a strange xenon, and this combination is also present in Jupiter, meaning it could have come from the outer layers of the supernova that created the solar system. The idea that the solar system was born in a catastrophe should come as no surprise. I think there is, however, a different way of looking at the meteorites, which would lead you to a totally different conclusion but this is something that I will cover separately in a different video. The important point here is that this concept has the expansion mechanism as part of the formation process and then has this ultra-dense matter slowly becoming less dense and causing an expansion. Depending on the makeup of the planet, this may cause more or less expansion. One of the main objections to this concept is that it would make the surface gravity too high in the early stages and fossil evidence would indeed suggest that dinosaurs were not able to move their limbs with a surface gravity which would be equal or greater than we have today. The Cosmological Mass Accretion Model This concept has many different branches. The classical one was the view adopted by Hilgenberg. His concept is similar to the ideas on push gravity which I've covered in the past. The basic idea that he had was that you could construct a model of space that accounts for the force of gravity simply by assuming that any mass is a hole towards which ether flows. 
Hence, this ether space is concentrated inside the planets, giving rise to new atoms and particles in a conversion process which, to date, has never been observed. Tom van Vlaanderen has taken this concept further and developed a model which allows for the interaction between the light ether and the gravity ether and would allow the build-up of mass inside the bodies. He viewed that this build-up not only explained radioactive decay, but exploding planets and supernova events as well. James Maxlow followed Carey's ideas that by using Einstein's idea of E equals mc squared, it must be possible for matter to be created from energy. Was a process of condensation or segregation of new matter from energy in the core of the planets responsible for the expansion? This new matter accumulates at the core mantle interface, and the increase in volume results in the swelling of the mantle. Mantle swell is then manifested in the outer crust as a crustal extension and is currently occurring as extension along the mid ocean rift zones. He viewed matter generation as an endothermic reaction which would eventually lead to the process stopping, and hence expansion ceasing. Other variants of this model try and assume that the planets are absorbing some exotic species of matter like dark matter. And that's as much as I'm going to say on those. Are there other alternatives for the expansion mechanism? If we consider the electric universe, then we have stars that are essentially an energy conversion point. Charged particles flow in through the poles, and these then flow out as what we see as the solar wind. At the same time, electrons are slowly flowing inwards. The planets themselves are the result of ejections from stars or gas giants under electrical stress. These planets are not directly connected to the incoming current, but are indirectly connected via the star. Or put it differently, they sit at a different electrical potential. They are not as electron deficient compared to the star itself. There is some debate about whether planets could be hollow in this model. An important consideration is that gravity is largely influenced by the electrical potential the body sits in. If we assume that the original body was indeed formed from a given piece of matter ejected from the star or gas giant, then it also stands to reason that changes in its environment would have a dramatic effect on the density of the matter within the body. Could this lead to an expansion? The problem that I see here is that if the gravitational field strength was lower in the past and higher now, then this would lead to a contraction. Another possibility is the accumulation of matter through the connection to the star. If we assume that current flows in at the poles of a planet, could this current generate additional matter internally? The problem that I see is that the amount of current that would flow, I'm not sure would lead to a significant increase in mass itself. Now another concept related to this would be that changes in this incoming current could create an outward pressure. Is this pressure strongest in the initial formation process? And was this more extreme for the Earth compared to other planets as it was ripped away from Saturn, creating yet another change in this pressure as it moved to the higher charged Sun? Is there a link between the electrostatic scarring and the expansion process? If we examine the concept of compressive ionization, then it can easily be seen that there will be a difference of charge between the surface and the interior of any massive body. If the material below the crust is partially ionized, could a weakness in the crust force this matter to the surface, spreading the plates? This would of course assume a hollow earth, and a crust and a mantle depth that would decrease, maybe to the point that there would be too little pressure to cause this mechanism to continue. Maybe this is what we see on the moon, and also explains why it rings like a bell. There are many links that I see that are worth exploring in relation to an expanding Earth and the electric universe. For now, I'm going to turn my attention elsewhere, but this is certainly a topic that I will be coming back to. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.